teaching was not useful for the blind king because he is not prepared to follow it, but that teaching is useful for anybody who gets into the spiritual path and who accepts to follow the spiritual way of living. <coughs> so this Sanasujata <coughs> is one of the four Kumaras I explained. Yes. This is also explained in yes. Mark's master's yes. teachings also. Yeah. About <coughs> the starting of the creation when Brahma is created. So from the from the utterance, from the expression of Brahma, uh, <coughs> the first one who came out is Narada. That was the first outcome from Brahma. And after this, from the mind of the Brahma, the four Kumaras, they came into existence. They are called Sanaka. <coughs> Sanandana is 
to promote the spiritual evolution of the beings. To steal the beings because the beings, they need some motivation. So these Kumaras, because they pervade all the beings through their consciousness, so they create, they produce in the, in the minds of the beings an intention for evolution, the spirit, evolution of the spirit. Does this include the mineral kingdom also? Yes, yes. All, all kingdoms. Oh, yeah. hmm. So that is their work. Oh, yeah. And they are called Kumaras because they always, for them they have no uh, no old age and death and all these things. Oh, yeah. Kumara means the one who is always young, little. Who is always young? Yeah. young, in the young. Ah, the young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy. Kumara. That is why they are described as Kumaras always. Mm -hmm. Their task is, as long as the creation is there, they have their task. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <coughs> so from time to time, they also manifest in, into form. Who is this? So which epoch are you talking now about? Hmm? From which period are you talking no, same now? Same period of Krishna. This, this is from, from the Mahabharata period only. Uh -huh. From the blind king. From the blind king? Yeah, that time only. During the mm -hmm. blind king mm -hmm. But before that, I am just explaining who are they. So they, <coughs> they are all pervading like the Lord, they exist everywhere, yeah. in every atom also. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> because they exist as principles and from time to time they get manifested into form also. That is what, just like how the Lord, even the Supreme Lord, when He comes down into form many times, so along with the Lord, all of them also the cosmic, the supracosmic, the cosmic beings also, they come into form to cooperate with the work of the Lord. Because that is always like a play. So all these four, they came, all the, all the four of them also, they came into form when Lord Krishna was there to ah. work with him. But here to the blind king, he did not come in that form. Even though when they are in the form, the body also, then also, they can continue their work. They have all capabilities. <laughs> they are not limited. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, they are not like us because we are in a, we are in a form, we are in the body, we are limited to this. Mm -hmm. we, are, we cannot exist simultaneously. But for them, they have no limitation. They are at their own free will. They yeah, can, this is this. They are free of karma. Free of karma. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is why for them it is ah. possible. Uh -huh. So therefore, even though they are they, are, they have incarnated into form, even then yeah. they continue their work wherever <coughs> wherever they are called. Um, so they can manifest, they can continue their work like that. So, in the first uh, book which we studied this morning, in World Teacher, in one of the chapters, the World Mother She guides even the Kumaras and the other Rishis also because she also worked for, to cooperate with this whole plan with the Lord. So she has her own role. So she manifests in the Himalayan <coughs> caves and she also instructs them 
how they have to work out all this. That is also there in one of the chapters of this book, <coughs> World Teacher, the first book. So she, once it happens that he, Sarasriyata, he asks her, the world mother, when she was instructing him, she asks, she asks a question, in the same book it comes, in the first book, she asked the mother, he asked the mother that what is the fate of this holy, <coughs> this holy land, is it to be ruled by this blind king for a long time? Mm -hmm. That is what she asks the mother. Then the mother says that, after all he is also one of my children. Yeah. Eh? So mm -hmm. why do you <laughs> think like that? So one day you have to go to him to give your teaching to him. That is what she says. She, she tells him long before. She you says, since you have, since you got a, a little stringency about this fellow, because he is, no, no doubt he is law, law, against the law and he is wicked fellow, but still he is a part of the creation, all, crea all the beings are my children. So since you have this little stringency, for this you have to, one, one day you have to go yourself to him to give the teaching, but that teaching will not be useful for him. <laughs> he, is, he is all proof for these things, but that teaching will be, will be, will become a guideline for all the spiritual practitioners mm -hmm. for the coming generations <coughs> and coming times. That is what mother says to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this was the prelude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You see, always there will be a connection yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then, he, then he says, yes, he, because he is also and, and that being, supracosmic being, so he, for him it is not difficult to know. So he accepts this and then after this, after some time, when this, all these fellows, they came into existence, the blind king and <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, Kauravas, his sons, his half hundred sons, and Pandavas, the Pandu's sons all have come into existence. Then, as it, as we have studied this morning, this Pandu, the younger brother, has died. <coughs> so, he was he was staying in, in Himalayas because he, he made his brother to sit on the throne and he was always moving and promoting all the spiritual activities and everything also. <clears throat> but uh, he has no long, uh, very long life. So, but he was a devotee of the Lord. And he, before leaving his body, he tells his wife that you, you, don't, you don't worry, you and our children are always protected by him, the Lord. He is he is anyway, he, is, he has come into, already he has incarnated. So, you always stick on to your, in your devotion to him. He is the protector for everybody. He has come down to protect the law. And he will destroy the lawlessness. He will protect the law. So you and your sons always keep abiding by the law and keep devoted. He will take care of you and then he dies in Himalayas. And meanwhile, this fellow, the blind king, he feels <coughs> very confident because my brother can never return here. Because he, he left this and also he is living in, in Himalayas, he got his children there. So those fellows, they, are, they can never come. So I am free with my sons and all my kingdom I can bestow to my son. And like this he was thinking. <laughs> but what happened after he died? The Rushis, because their masters are there, they, they carry the work of all this. So these Rushis, they have taken responsibility to bring the wife of this Pandu and the children to Hastina, the capital. And in the royal court, 
they brought this and before all the people he said these are the the children the sons of your brother so this yudhishthira is the eldest in your family so according to the law he is to be made the, the successor of you for the kingdom he is actually he is it belongs to him <coughs> so therefore we are here we are we are here to hand over <coughs> their mother and these children to you for your care so it is your responsibility to care take care of them and to <coughs> make him your successor and uh, the prince and the successor so this blind fellow because all this is before before the people and before all the elders so he cannot do, do anything <laughs> so he is not happy inside because these rishis brought it so he cannot say no otherwise he says oh i don't know there is no proof that this these fellows are my brothers children so he can he can say like that <laughs> but now he cannot say like that so he is not happy so afterwards he made all wicked things to destroy this fellows but they were not destroyed because they, they were under the protection of lord so all these things happened and they are grown up his sons are grown up and they are also grown up and uh, for for you know what one of the things what he has done is that he at one at a particular place he built a big palace for them and that palace he built in such a manner that with little fire within no time the whole palace will be burnt away it's such material something like wax something like wax uh-huh. putting something like that and he said for all people he said i have built a wonderful palace uh, for my for the wife and children of my brother to make them comfortable and so he sent them into that mm-hmm. palace <laughs> but vedavyasa already warned yudhishthira that this palace is built like this be careful at nights any night they can burn this palace so you keep the underground way out into the jungle as soon as there is fire you can escape from here so like this vedavyasa <laughs> Long before he has warned them, and according to that Bhima, because he was very strong, he has he was digging. His, he made his way from underground tunnel, a tunnel into the forest directly. And the night, as expected, after a few months, then the fellows, the people of these fellows, they set it on fire. And what happened? There was there was a lady servant, and uh, there are five. youngsters boys they were there in the palace so when there is a fire bhima has taken his mother and brothers to the tunnel out but they were in the palace sleeping and they died and then these people were thinking that ah oh, now my brothers wife and children are dead i have no but no rivalry because one lady and five five young boys five boys they have died mm-hmm. so he was thinking like that mm-hmm. but they escaped and they were in exile <laughs> they were constantly guided by vedavyasa by krishna and so they were all protected all these things happened and after after 12 years then <coughs> they, there was the marriage of draupadi their wife so when it was announced because in those days in the royal family the girl will select mm-hmm. she has the right to select as her husband so it's called swayambara she shall and then these fellows five brothers they emerged there in in this guy and uh, and they made it they, they made a test also for this whoever fellow wins this test he will be selected by the girl so arjuna he will he won the test because the test with the arrow and bow it's <coughs> trying to find a lot of the same story in different mythology yes how is this uh, there was he he made her father made 
on the top something rotates with two fishes and looking into their looking into the lake Reflection. their image their so he has to shoot the arrows exactly to them eye to that to the eye of the fish mm. which is not so easy because it is continuously rotating with some wheel yeah. so only arjuna could do it mm. people know this and so arjuna did this and so he won her <coughs> so all these things happened and uh, so they they came back again to the blind king and he was not happy he was hi again these fellows are alive <laughs> so then bhishma said now it is time for you to to give their kingdom to them then the blind king said but my sons are there then bhishma said you give some part to them and some part to your sons they will agree actually the whole kingdom belongs to them mm-hmm. but they will agree so so then what this fellow this fellow did was he has selected a place from a far little bit far from hastina which is a very barren place mm-hmm. there no you cannot cult you grow anything and it is like with rocks and all these barren things so he has selected such a place and he said this is a wonderful place this i am giving for them for my brother's sons mm-hmm. so krishna krishna said okay accept this so they have accepted mm-hmm. they have accepted and they have gone there and because of the lord lord's grace then all this is changed into well wonderful place they had good fields everything mm-hmm. and a wonderful palace was built afterwards by maya and what this blind fellow expecting that they will dis- they will disintegrate there but it was on the contrary they became more powerful mm-hmm. <laughs> so again this fellow was thinking that how to destroy this because his whole always his son especially his eldest son duryodhana he always asks his father finding something new to destroy them if they are there even though we have large kingdom but any time they are there we have fear so destroy people them people like them people will like them so all the people like them then we cannot be the rulers <laughs> <coughs> so eliminate them then we can rule the whole thing that is always their policy so then they tried to eliminate them by a force but that could not happen now this fellow blind king with the help of the brother of his wife who is also another crooked fellow he said now we will make it in a friendly manner not any more by like by by trick we have to win them the plan is made by his <laughs> so then they invited them uh, to spend some days and uh, to play Gambling. gambling play it's a gambling play uh-huh. so actually gambling is mm-hmm. forbidden but this fellow said oh between the brothers you can just for 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 a just a friendly is you know, it is not really gambling but between brothers only you can play so that this yudhishthira was on say he was also a good player but he never does this gambling but the blind fellow he has invited them and whether to accept this or not that is also another thing mm. because which is not legal how can yudhishthira and pandavas accept but before that lord krishna this is the thing it is the wonderful thing you know when mm. when he has given this all this barren land and all this this little kingdom useless kingdom then krishna made this yudhishthira to make a big ritual and with this ritual this yudhishthira was elevated as as a mighty emperor king. because this ritual is a, is a special ritual where the horses will be, will they will go 
were there. And all the people of all the rulers of the kingdom, they will honor them. So finally, what happened? All, all the other rulers, they accepted him as their supreme. And then once again, these fellows, for blind king and his sons, it was a big, uh, difficult event. So how to get rid of this? That is why he has invited them for gambling. But before this, Krishna told Yudhishthira, now, <coughs> Whoever asks anything to you, you should not say no. You remember, mm. it is I am asking through them. That is, that is the only one thing he, saw, he told his sister at the end. So immediately after Krishna went away, there is a message from his <coughs> uncle to come, you come with your brothers and with your wife. So Yudhishthira immediately he thought this is what Lord said. Uh, he said, you do, you have to follow everything, every, what whoever asks. So he has accepted the invitation. He went there. <coughs> and then his uncle said, you, you do, you play gambling. Gambling is not legal. But what the Lord said, whatever everybody, anybody asks, you have to accept. So he accepted. So, <laughs> and in the gambling, first he said, even though it is just for amusement, but gambling is gambling. So there, there are, you have to accept some rules. So whoever wins the game will have <coughs> all the kingdom eh? and also will have his everything, his riches and everything. Yudhishthira said, okay, because Lord said, you should not say no. He said, okay. <laughs> and this fellow, <coughs> the brother-in-law of his blind king, he is a manipulator. He is the junior king of Gandhar. Uh, so Sekuni. His name is Sekuni. So this fellow has, is, he knows how to manipulate in gambling. So by manipulation, on their behalf he played and he won the play. Mm -hmm. So Yishtira has to put all his kingdom, all his riches and everything. So the, he, because he lost the game. And this fellow once again said, now once again let us play. He said, I have given all the everything, I have nothing. But you have your brothers, you have your wife. So you can put them. If you win the if you win once again all these things you can get back. But he just said, okay. And once again he manipulated and he lost. Now this fellow, the king, the son of this king, blind king said, now you are all my slaves because you have lost the game, you put yourself and your brothers, your wife and you lost the game, so you are all my slaves. <laughs> huh? Then he said, that is the wicked, most wicked thing. And then he said, you, you called one of his fellows, his brother, other than his brother, and said, you bring their wife here to the court, their wife. Because she is one by us, she is a slave to us, so bring her here to the court. So this fellow went and told her, you have to come to the court. She said, why I should come to the court? Then he said, yes, your husband has lost the game, so you are our slave, you have to come. And when she was not uh, ready to come, then he caught hold of her hair, you know, Indian woman long hair we have. And he dragged her into the court before all the people. And then this fellow, this blind king knows this, what is happening, but he did not say anything to his sons. <coughs> and then this, this son said, now we can do whatever we want with these fellows, because they are our slaves. Then he said to his brother, you take away her clothes before all these fellows. And her husbands, these fellows cannot speak anything, they are our slaves. So then he started to take away the clothes and she prayed.